If you've ever worked with epoxy, particularly in a coating scenario, you may have come across a common term known as amine blush. But what exactly is amine blush and how should it be dealt with in the epoxy coating process? In this video, we're gonna take a look at what you'll need to do in order to prevent it causing issues with your workflow. If you are overcoating with additional epoxy resin coats or any type of paint or varnish system, its removal is essential. So what is it? Amine blush is a waxy or greasy film that can form on the surface of epoxy coatings as they cure. It's caused by a reaction between the amine hardener in the epoxy and the moisture and carbon dioxide in the surrounding air. This reaction creates a byproduct that rises to the surface of the coating, leaving behind a hazy or cloudy appearance to the finish and a waxy film on the surface. If you've ever got a cloudy finish in an epoxy coating scenario, this could be one of several culprits causing this. Because this is a reaction between the amine and the moisture and carbon dioxide levels in the air, the effects of this will be much more evident in high humidity, cool conditions or damp environments. Dealing with amine blush is crucial in preventing issues further down the line in your epoxy coating project. If left untreated, it can contaminate the surface, interfere with adhesion, cause finishes to fail and compromise the overall quality and lifespan of the coating. But dealing with it is much simpler than you might think. There are a couple of things that you should definitely not do in order to get rid of it, so let's start with those. First of all, don't just sand the surface. This is probably the most common and immediately logical approach that you might think of. However, sanding will risk forcing the blush further down into the surface, into the scratches created by the sanding process. This will leave your surface contaminated. Alongside this, due to its waxy nature, it will also rapidly clog sanding discs and generally just make a mess. The second thing that you really don't want to do is to try and use any harsh chemicals such as acetone or paint thinners to remove it. So how is this best dealt with? It's quite simple really and washing is one of the primary ways that I recommend removal. Amine blush can actually be easily dissolved with water, and so there's no need to use anything other than that. To remove the amine blush, simply wash the affected area with a clean cloth dampened with water. Warm water will help significantly here, and I would typically use water that is about as hot as I can manage to put my hand in. Regularly rinse out and rotate the cloth as you work over the surface. I usually like to use a Scotch-Brite type pad for this process. This basically acts like a cloth or a sponge, holding a good amount of water, but it will also very lightly abrade the surface as you go. Here you can see the blush that is coming off the pad as I rinse it out in the water. Using a Scotch-Brite pad means that once you've finished and the surface is dry, you can quite clearly see any areas that you've missed. Anything that remains glossy after drying has likely been missed and can then be revisited. Drying is also a critical part of the process. The water that resides on the surface contains the dissolved amine that you've just washed off. If this is left to dry naturally, then it can redeposit the amines on the surface again. Once you've finished washing, make sure to dry the surface thoroughly before moving on to your next step in the process. If you want to be certain that you've got everything, then a second washing operation certainly won't hurt. Alongside washing, amine blush can also be removed in a mechanical way using a product called Peel Ply. Peel Ply is a great solution that ticks a number of boxes in an epoxy coating scenario. If you haven't seen it before, this is what it looks like. It's a polyester fabric that's treated with a release agent. This is laid down as the final operation in a range of epoxy processes, such as glassing and coating most commonly, but also sometimes for smaller jobs such as filleting. Once the epoxy is cured, the peel ply can be easily removed or peeled away from the surface. This takes with it any excess of resin. It leaves behind a uniform textured surface beneath. And this is the equivalent to a surface sanded to 80 grit roughness, ideal for bonding to. As this involves peeling off the top layer of the resin, it takes with it the amine blush that resides on the top surface. This solution leaves you with a surface that is blush free, 
correctly abraded for further bonding and completely clean. The peel ply can be removed at any time down the line. It can sit in place for months actually offering protection of the surface whilst other jobs are carried out in the area. Once you're ready to move on it can be removed delivering a perfectly abraded and blush free surface for the next step in your process. Due to the texture it leaves behind peel ply is not recommended for clear coating applications but in cases where you will be painting or bonding to the surface later on it's a great solution. Certain hardener types from the West System range are far less susceptible to producing amine blush. The 207 Special Clear Hardener for example is blush free and so if you're using this you don't have to worry about washing first. That is one of the reasons that this product is recommended for clear coating applications with wood and composite finishing. We'll take a look through the range of hardeners available and just what they'll do for you in some later videos in this series. So by understanding what Amine Blush is and how to deal with it, you can ensure trouble-free finishes, reliable bonding and see the great benefits of an epoxy base and what that will deliver to your coating projects. In summary, don't forget to deal with it. You'll likely see it appear more evidently when working in cool, damp or humid conditions. Before proceeding with overcoating or bonding, wash the surface with some warm water and a Scotch-Brite pad or utilize peel ply within your process and remove the amine blush along with the top layer of resin. Let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions and keep your eyes peeled for more videos in this new West System series of quick how-to guides on a range of epoxy-based tips and how-tos. Cheers guys, I'll catch you in the next video.